Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Has the lost Civil War gold already been found? And I'm not talking about just recently either. I'm talking about from 1926. Let's explore! Yes, indeed. Gold like this. Imagine finding this as a kid playing around and here you see an 1834 gold coin and a stash of gold coins. Well, that's exactly what happened many, many years ago in an article that was shared with me by one silver surfer. You know, he's the guy that likes to leave me a little bit of algorithm food which I am actually going to encourage you guys to do, even if you've never commented on my videos before, just type the words algorithm food in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so already, hit that little thumbs up button and maybe click the notification bell so that you can be apprised of the latest news and information and videos of all different sorts with regards to precious metals and coin collecting on this channel like to do a variety of stuff, and some of it I get from good people like Silver Surfer. And we're going to be talking about this from Coin Update from the Colonel's Desk, two lucky farm boys and a jug of Silver War gold coins. A fascinating story indeed. Kentucky has plenty of stories relating to paper, money, coins, medals, and tokens. Many of these treasures were minted or printed in the Bluegrass State, but some were transported there in one form or another, like a hoard of gold coins hidden in a nearby Tennessee during the Civil War, discovered two generations later and converted to paper cash for a spending spree in Kentucky. Now, the title of this video is, Has the Lost Civil War Gold Already Been Found? And in this case, it appears it has, although it also implies that perhaps maybe the rumors of other gold, perhaps bars that maybe were stowed away by the Confederacy, or even other gold coins are still out there, but it may not exist. This may be it. This could be the epitome of it all, and that was back in 1926, and it was a tobacco planting season on the farm of William the Wheat on the edge of Stewart County, Tennessee, a few miles from the Tennessee border. If you farmed or grew up near tobacco fields, you know how important the setting period is. Big beefy tobacco plants start out as tiny seeds. Their powerful but delicate potential is nurtured into seedlings just large enough to transplant to the fields by late May and early June. There they grow to maturity. As a farmer battles aphids and hornworms, bad weather, diseases like black shank and other challenges. He also tops the plants, removing flower heads to focus the energy that would normally go into producing blooms. So it instead grows, instead grows bigger leaves. Finally, the plants are harvested to be air cured and turned into the fragrant of Kentucky, burly, smoked in pipes and cigars, and mostly cigarettes. The growth season moves in full gear when the seedlings are set in the field. This was a task that farmer Thweet entrusted in June of 1926 to his nephews, Ernest and Austin Roberts, aged 20 and 18, respectively. And in it, this is one of the coins here. Uh, the coins the Roberts found were several 1834 half eagles, probably of the classic head type as seen here. Today, any coin of this type is valuable to collectors. The one pictured here sold um, in circulated condition with all the scratches you saw from the bigger picture there. Uh, sold for Stacks and Bowers in May of 2021 for 840 bucks. As they were setting a row of plants, one of the boys was surprised to find a $5 gold piece in the soil. Can you imagine that? Just doing your task, you're doing your work, setting your row of plants and finding a $5 gold piece. At face value, it was worth about $80 in today's spending power. In the next row, an even bigger surprise, a heavy $20 gold coin, a hefty $20 gold coin. After that, their uncle's tobacco setting 
was set aside in favor of a treasure hunt. More and more coins turned up in the field, all made of good old-fashioned American gold. They appeared to have been scattered from a buried glass jug that had broken apart. In the coin hoard the Roberts boys found, there were several 1834 half eagles, um, and as you see there, that's the reverse of the coin. The Roberts boys abandoned their farm duties and carried a couple of pounds of precious metals home. A couple of pounds? Wow! Some $675 uh, dollars of face value to show their mother. We can imagine Uncle William was forgiving, even though a planting day was lost. And in those days, that was a pretty big deal to lose a planting day. The face value alone of the coins would have been more than $10,000 in today's money. $10,000 gold found on that field. Amazing. Of course, old coins in 1926 had collectible value, too, as they do today. Each of the coins was more than 60 years old, dating from before the American Civil War, the antebellum period. Newspaper accounts of the discovery noted the Cache's 1834 Half Eagles uh, were worth $15 each to collectors. Imagine, crazy, imagine that. <clears throat> and by the way, here's an ad for uh, a Ford Touring car uh, for $295 at the time. Uh, so how did word get out about the treasure? The lucky farm boys took some of their newfound money to Hopkinsville, Kentucky, a few miles away to buy an automobile. Uh, they were more than happy to tell their story. By the time they had deposited most of the gold into three local Tennessee banks in exchange for paper currency, which piqued the interest of the local chief of police. No claims were made to the unearthed treasure, so Ernest and Austin Roberts got their car. Before long, their adventure made newspaper headlines from Los Angeles to Tampa. Uh, what were the mysterious gold coins doing in a tobacco field? Some locals opined that they were stolen loot, buried by the Jesse James gang after the Civil War. Others speculated that coins were hidden away during the chaotic conflict. Tennessee, at the start of the Civil War, was a state divided, with some citizens pro-Union and others pro-Secession. It was the last state to formally withdraw and join the Confederacy. Kentucky, meanwhile, officially held neutral and control of various areas and towns, including Hopkinsville's, passed back and forth between Confederate and Union forces, according to the winds of war. With combat swirling and the future uncertain, many people hid their valuables from enemies real and imagined. We can assume this was the origin of the jug of gold coins, buried for protection and then forgotten or lost to be discovered by two fortunate young farmhands some 60 years later. What an amazing story. Lost precious, found precious metal treasure in this case. And uh, it's uh, pretty exciting and that they were able to take this money that was 675 face value, worth more than that, to buy this $295 uh, uh, car here, $295 car uh, that you could have bought at that time. Of course, I don't know if this is exactly dated to that period, but regardless, let's say it was, I mean, that looks like earlier than 1926, um, a car there, so it probably was um, earlier than that. But nonetheless, what an amazing find indeed uh, for these boys. A lost Civil War gold. And more than likely, that's probably what the lost Civil War gold is. It's just probably collections of people burying up their gold in, uh, in areas of high conflict of uncertainty into fields in glass jars or clay jars or what have you. So you never know if you are live in and around those areas, have your metal detector handy and uh, be looking around to see what is out there in terms of the uh, uh, gold that could be found. Fascinating story. I love stories like this. Thanks again to Silver Surfer for sending along to me. If you enjoyed this video, I have a whole playlist of which this video will be included called Found Precious Metals Treasures. And I've been doing these videos for literally years. Um, unique to this channel um, and so let me know what you think check it out and check out some of the earlier stories I believe stories like this are timeless so this article was from August 26 2021 and this find was back in 1926 but more than likely you've probably not heard about it unless you 
are an avid reader of coinupdate.com, which is actually a very good website for the latest coin news. I've covered several um, stories from their publication. Great site indeed. So post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.